thanks to Whitney for having me here today. And I want to share kind of my path uh, where I went with Fastenal. I've been with Fastenal 26 and a half years now, and uh, it's been a great ride. And so I have put up on the board over there how you spell my name and my email address if anyone wants to get in touch with me after. And uh, obviously our website is fastenal.com. We are a much different company than you probably saw last week. LinkedIn is all about their technology company, basically. We are a grassroots bricks and mortar type company because what we, what we cut our teeth with, and I'll just start with that, what we cut our teeth with 52 years ago now was nuts and bolts, selling nuts and bolts. So a show of hands, who in here ever thought of a career selling nuts and bolts? That's about how many I usually see, zero. Well, I didn't think of that either, but it's big business. We have since moved into selling all industrial and construction supplies, and you'll see a lot of that later, and have now moved into, we have over 3,000 locations. We're in all 50 states and more than 25 countries. We're more than a $5 billion organization. We are uh, traded on the NASDAQ. We are an index account for them. So when you hear stocks being reported, the Dow Jones went up 5% today, or the, the NASDAQ went down 10 points. They obviously don't look at every single stock that's in there. They just have index accounts, and that's the, uh, that tells them where the majority of that business is going. And we're one of those accounts on the, on the NASDAQ. So we've come a long ways from selling nuts and bolts out of one little, that, that's the little shop that started there on the left, to more of what we are today. And it was just a vision by our, our founders on the front of this picture on the right. His name was Bob Kierlin, and he just had a vision. He was uh, graduated with his engineering degree, went to work for IBM, had done that for a year or two, and thought he wanted to do something else, something bigger. And so he grabbed some buddies, put some money together, started a little company, and, and here we are today. So that's, that's basically the, the, the background of the history of the company. And there have been people that have written books on us and used us in uh, the, the Breakthrough Company, Good to Great were mentioned in, a lot of those that, that you may have read or will bump into uh, here about in some of the classes. This is the other, uh, I, I love this slide as I would because I'm prejudiced for Fastenal. But if I ask, you know, who knows of a stock that's probably done really well? Everybody says Apple. Everybody knows Apple. You know, who in here has a cell phone? Anybody? Yeah, is there anybody that doesn't? I mean, that, that's the thing, and half of them or so are probably Apple, and we've got computers and everything else, and, and Microsoft. So those two have done extremely well. And you would think they're at the top of the list. Well, then you take a pretty big jump up, and United Health Group, healthcare, we all need that. You know, as we get older, not like many of you, but like me, things start happening. I, I start failing, I need to go to the doctor. So that's done very well. And then Fastenal has, has eclipsed those. And these are of companies that have, whose stock has been out there at least 25 years or more. So we're very proud of that. And all of that, all I'm talking about with any of this is, is for all of you, you may have careers, but you may not either. You know, what are most of you going to school for? What are you going to school for? I mean, not the, uh, sorry, not the major, but what's your objective in going to college? Um, employment benefits, my qualifications. Okay, uh, employment, uh, maybe a good job, a better job. What about you? Uh, honestly, I just want to have a degree in myself. Okay, want to have a degree so you can see what you can do. How about you? Collect money? Collect money for a company and then it is my job. Very nice. Okay, so all of us, I mean, for me, the scholarship ran out many years ago. For a lot of you, you might not be on scholarship or it ran out a long time ago. So we all need to work. That's what most people ultimately are in school to gain knowledge. Why are you gaining knowledge? So you can work, so you can find a better job, so you can help more people. That's what we're here for, either to work or to help people or maybe best case scenario, we can do both. And so that's all of what I talk about is how is a means to an end. How do you get there and, and what do you do to get there? This is Fastenal at a glance. If there's 
one slide, sometimes we do a, a 10 minute to 30 minute synopsis of the company for, for groups, and we usually just use this slide. It tells about the company and about all of the different things we do at a glance. It shows our sales for last year, what our net earnings were, how many branches we have, and uh, you combine the, the branches with our on-site locations, and that gives us our total locations of over 3,000, the amount of inventory, the countries we're in, how many employees we have, all of those things that you as career people or potential, what are you, you, know, what are you looking for in a job? Well, I'm looking for uh, some kind of security. I'm looking to be able to help people. I'm looking at all of those things. So uh, I, I would ask if, uh, let's say, what's your name, sir? Zach. Zach. So Zach works for ABC Company, and he's got that job, and he makes X amount of dollars a year. And so Zach decides to quit and go do his own thing over here, and what's your name? Jennifer. And Jennifer takes over for Zach. So what determines how much ABC Company can pay Jennifer? Does anybody know the answer to that? How much can they pay Jennifer? How much can ABC Company pay Jennifer? Okay. And, and say that again. How much they can afford to pay her. You're getting very close. That, that's probably the right answer, depending on how much they paid Zach. So they can't, if the company isn't growing, and that's what I'm getting at, you're all looking for ways to future yourselves, move your career forward, have something you enjoy doing, but we're, it all has to be beneficial to your lifestyle and, and, and what you want. So if Jennifer starts at ABC Company and whatever Zach was making, that's all they can pay her unless that company's growing. And that's really all that it depends on. Because it doesn't matter. If Jennifer's doing the job twice as good as Zach, they can't pay her twice as much because the money doesn't just grow on trees. They don't just have more money. Oh, Jennifer's way better than Zach. I'm glad he left. We're going to pay her twice as much. Oh, where, where's the money come from? Well, if they're not growing, there isn't any more money. If she's doing half the job, eh, they're probably not going to pay her half as much or she'll leave. And so that's really, you, you, as you're looking down your career path, what are you looking for? You know, most of us want to look at some place where we're challenged, where there's an opportunity. Well, that company's got to be growing. And so you look at the past performance, it's just like stocks or, or anything else you look at, financials. There's no guarantee of the future. None of us have a guarantee. That would be nice when you find one, call me. But what you look at is past performance. That's the best indicator of what's going to happen in the future. So you look at that company and where did it start? Where has it come? And now look at their leadership and look at where is it going in the future? And, and how do we know that? And that's really the best indicator of where you're going to go if you, hook your, if you hook your wagon to that train. So that's, that's really what you're looking at. And as you look at all companies' websites, ours or anyone else's, where have they been, where are they today, and where are they going? What are their future plans? Uh, I am, I'm guessing this, I don't think I'm hooked up, so I don't think this video will work. Uh, would be nice if it would. Do you mind if I play a video? Will it? Yes. Let me see if it will. No, I am not hooked up to your wireless and I don't have it hooked up to my phone so we'll just that's okay we'll just keep going so this shows as, as I was talking a little bit about our size and, and what we do we're a, a service organization we're wholesale distribution so we buy a product from manufacturers and we distribute that to the end users so we're what's better known as the middleman and Depending on what you mark that up depends on what the market will bear and how good your service and services are. So that's what we provide is, is services to a company to take care of them and sell them the product. And so we've got all of our different locations and it shows how we service the United States, how close our branches are within a 30 minute drive and within an hour's drive of everywhere in the continental US anyway. 
This shows our distribution system with our hub and spoke uh, system. It's, we have 14 large distribution centers and they serve us all of the branches and all of the customers around it. So as you can see, we're here in Salt Lake City. We've got one of the distribution centers here in, in Utah and that's the, the U-Hub. So it shows all of the East Coast kind of comes together and meets the West Coast here in Salt Lake. So we have a lot of opportunity here and a lot of things happening. Our distribution center here, so there are opportunities there in operations and sortation and drivers and everything else, as well as our, our street stores that I'll get into later. But uh, all of the product meets there and is distributed out to all of our store locations. And you can see some of the automation and what some of them uh, look like. Our bigger ones uh, have all automated sortation systems. And then it sorts and distributes all of this product. This is just a, a sampling of the different types of products we carry as a company. And these are the solutions from taking care of, uh, uh, taking care of we call them bin stocks. It's just where supplies are within a company and delivering and managing those. Uh, we also have the vending we started about 11 years ago now and it's taken the industry by storm because vending basically started in the, uh, in the medical industry to track and control all of those high dollar and very uh, intricate devices that, I mean, they're working on people's lives. So that's kind of where vending started. And then it went to the industrial side 12 or 15 years later, but was really expensive. So we've refined that and it's become uh, a huge driver force and kind of taken the market by storm. I, I touch on that just a little bit in another slide, but then e-business. So we have a great fastenal.com uh, website that people can purchase from, as well as our on-site model we have our distribution centers that I already talked about, our street stores where anyone can come in and buy things, and then an on-site model. And this is kind of where the industry has moved towards is more customer facing, more customer interaction. Because we're not here necessarily to compete with the Amazons of the world. That's, that's pretty tough. You need to jump in that with both feet and a, a big fat pocketbook. Uh, because they, they have about perfected that model. But we have a, a very good website. But we have gone to on-site, which is opening another store inside a customer's plant. So we do that also. We have street stores. We have on-sites. And then we have integrated supply, which is uh, helping move someone else's product that's proprietary uh, a little bit down the road. Oh, I just had a question. Yep. So Uh, great question. There's, uh, I'd say we, at our size, we've got about 3% of the market share is all. So there's 97% of that market share left. Of that market share, I would say other national players also uh, are doing some of that. There's, mm, let's see, throwing out some names. Uh, Granger, maybe most people maybe have heard of Granger. Uh, they're also in that space, and there's a couple other ones. Granger and us uh, were probably the two biggest mm -hmm. in that area. And then what takes up a lot of that market share, say 30% of it maybe or more, is little local mom and pop stores everywhere. You know, every every city that I go to, every town has some little distributor there that sells stuff. You know, just like the local hardware store, the local. Uh, drugstore does in a, in a small town, but here in a place like Salt Lake, there's probably 10, you know, somewhere around 10 local small Would competitors. Or is that a competitor? No, no. Walmart is a really good customer for us, uh, but we're stepping then into the world of retail, and we're, we're not retail, and we don't really fight that battle. Same thing with, uh, you're getting closer when you go to Home Depot and Lowe's. They are a, a bit of a competition, but they are retail, and it's a different business model. Uh, what Walmart does is puts our vending machines in their back rooms to move and manage stuff for them. Uh, over half of the companies, over half of the Fortune 500 companies right now 
have one of our have our vending system, our vending solution in one of their locations. And so you bet. And yeah, if anyone has any other questions, blurt them out because uh, I can talk forever and I'll wander off if uh, I don't kind of keep track of where I'm supposed to go on the slides here. Uh, so the this is really and, and these things at the bottom. This is what every company. It, most of you are probably employed now, and so all of your companies are looking to do these things on the bottom. Every, all companies want to reduce consumption, you know, uh, reduce the amount of products they use, if they can especially increase productivity. So if you can reduce consumption, increase your productivity, and automate your ordering system, and track all of that stuff all in one, why wouldn't you do that? What company wouldn't want to do that? And that's a good question. You sit down with any company and discuss that, and they're going to say, everybody wants to do that. If I could increase my production and get more stuff out the door and not have to really increase my labor or the amount of money I spend on products, sign me up. And that's really what we've done. So it's, we now have over 100,000 of these machines in customers' facilities across the country. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through some of the why Fastenal, why people are here, why I'm still here, why you may want to be here, why people choose a career with Fastenal. These are our, our cultural values, ambition, innovation, teamwork, and integrity. Uh, that's, what, that's what should be driving a company, and that's what we hold closest to our chest. We're growing this big company based on people with character of good integrity. Integrity is probably the most important one. At the end of the day, for all of you here, if you lose your integrity, you gave it up. It's about the only thing a company can't take away from you. You know, they can take away your money, they can take away your job, they can try to humiliate you, but they can't take away your integrity. You have to give that up if, if you do. You know, at the end of the day, when you go home, you have to still like that person in the mirror. And so we drive that uh, every day. We work with a lot of the colleges uh, across the country, actually, doing all different kinds of systems from class projects and case studies to uh, visits. If you ever want to set up to go see our, any of our stores or our distribution centers, uh, any of those things, I can set that up. Uh, I think the school does, doesn't the school also will have a day where they take out a group of students and go visit companies? And so we did that last, uh, I think it was last fall, about a year ago, with, with uh, Slick here. And so obviously, we do some classroom presentations, uh, do some sales competitions, all of the things you see there. We work with the colleges to uh, assist people to gain more knowledge and uh, become better at their, their careers. Internships, we do offer internships. Uh, the internships are in conjunction, usually, with the work you do because it, you learn you learn all about business from working at Fastenal and that's one of the things we do for employees the main thing we probably do for employees is teach them how to run a business we as a company fabricate great business people and and that's what we do and so most of the people that use us as an internship start out as a part-time job and then when they need to use it for whatever class or wherever they're at in their schooling, they use it and go through our structured internship program and do that for the 12 weeks. And then when that's done, they keep it as a part-time job. Uh, people will always ask, how long, uh, if I decide to stay part-time, how long before I can become full-time? And the answer is always the same, from two weeks to two years depends on, on how quickly you catch on and what your availability is and when we've got a position for you. I have had people work for us part-time for four years all through their schooling and then when they graduated, they promoted to a manager right after they graduated because they trained long enough and, and were that good. And so it, it's not a, it doesn't have to be in the summer. We don't hire just summer interns. We hire uh, good people at any time, and they can use the internship anytime through their through their schooling, uh, and so that just kind of. Yep. So you can do an internship through the 
through to college, it's worth study. So you can get credit for doing that internship. Um, at, and so get paid and get credit. And this is something like Fastenal would be a good example of that. So you can do it with a lot of different companies. People will ask me, uh, someone will always raise their hand and say, is it a paid internship? And I'll say, well, I, that depends on you. I mean, if you'll work for free, I just haven't had many people sign up for that one yet. I'm <laughs> still waiting for that. But yes, it is a paid internship. This leads a little more down the, the career path, uh, what the opportunities and sales opportunities are. Uh, most of the people start with us part-time. Uh, corporate kind of wants it to be 100% of the people part-time, but it's not quite a perfect world. That's where it's a lot easier for employees to learn the company, see how they like it, see what the career path is and what the opportunities are. Then they move into full-time, usually in inside or outside sales, then up into management and move any direction from there that they want to, up into middle or higher management. They can head towards operations. They can do anything they'd like to do from there. People are always interested in benefits too. This explains the benefits, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. We do a terrible job, our HR department tells us all the time. You guys in the field, you do a terrible job of explaining our benefits. And I say, yes, we do. <laughs> We're always talking about other things, but our benefits package is, is very good. Uh, we have a 401k, uh, and that's, people are signed up for that immediately, and we do a matching off of that. Uh, we used to do a, a, a lot more with the profit sharing program till the Enron and WorldCom scandals here a few years ago, and that shut down a lot of it as, as soon as they started taxing the payroll for every company. But we still have the 401k, and we match depending on the profitability of the company. Could be 10 cents on the dollar, could be 70 cents on the dollar, depending on how the company performs every quarter. Oh, we've got one. Do that. They don't have access to them at this at this time. Okay. Yep. the The f benefits are for the full time people, other than our four hundred one k. Our four hundred one k used to be after people were employees for a year in any facet, part-time or full-time. Now the 401k is active the day they start for part-time or full-time, but not the, the insurance stuff. Good question. Yes? Is that only for children's sales only? No, there's internships in, in a number of different areas, uh, most of them related to either our street stores, and most of those are sales, or at our distribution center. And some of those will be internships in uh, in operations, anything supply chain operations focused. Uh, what were you thinking? Oh, like accounting. accounting. So most of our accounting is done at our corporate office. So we don't do, we don't do any accounting internships. Uh, but we do, uh, we've hired an IT one uh, before, s an engineer here and there. Uh, almost anything in the business, on the business side from marketing communications, uh, all of all of those things, business management, administration, all of those. So, uh, digital marketing? Digital marketing would be on the IT side, and they may do some of those, but they're going to be few and far between because our computer department and, and our whole IT system is operated out of our corporate office in Minnesota. Those positions are all listed on our website, so if a person's interested, it's pretty tough for an internship to go to Minnesota, but for career opportunities, we hire a lot of those people. But the internships, you know, we, when we have a computer problem out here, I call Minnesota and, and they fix it. Did you? Go ahead. Uh, my question was about the position that you were saying about the uh, uh, really big world game stores. I mean, in my job as a sales, do you guys offer stock to employee or do you offer options? We do have some stock options. They're for certain positions. Uh, not for every single person in the company, uh, and they are also offered as part of the 401k. When we had to do something a little different with our stock options because of the payroll tax from, from the other business scandals, 
uh, not Fastenal's other businesses, the Enron and Worldcom thing, just to make that clear. But uh, when we did that, then we put it as one of the options on our 401k. So because it performed so well, and most of us were very invested in the Fastenal and the company stock, we wanted to keep going that direction, so we put it as one of the options on the 401k. Any other questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. We have what's called a, a Fastenal School of Business. Everyone that looks at a company hopefully is looking at, what kind of training am I going to get? I don't know anything about this, but it sounds interesting. Or, I would like to go to work for this company, I've heard it's a good place, but how am I going to learn what they do? So we have a Fastenal School of Business. It's actually uh, accredited and modeled after uh, University of Minnesota, and you can get a, 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 bad, or a associate's degree in industrial distribution working at Fastenal through our School of Business, accredited by the University of Minnesota. So our School of Business and our training program is all at the computer, uh, at the location you would be working at. You can log into it and see what's required, what's recommended, what you have taken, what you haven't taken, all of those things. And so there are uh, the online classes. There's also a lot of classes we have that are instructor-led trainings where the instructors travel around to locations and would come to our distribution center here in Utah and have trainings there and everybody in this local market would go and and go to those trainings. And that's everything from distribution to customer service to customer loyalty to HR to uh, there's training there's trainings that I'm supposed to have done today I'm sure that I don't have done yet and I've been here like I said 26 and a half years and I'm still I'm still training because there's a world of things I don't know. This is how you apply for a position at Fastenal. Jump on the website, uh, go to our careers tab, and you click on careers and it brings up a, another page and you'd want to do the advanced search for state and just put Utah, because if you just hit find jobs, it brings up every job we have posted in the world and you'll be looking at jobs in the Pacific Rim or India or Mexico or wherever. And you may want that, so that's fine if you do, but if not, you want Utah, click on Utah and it will bring it up, and then you just apply there. And all of our positions, every single position is posted there and has to be before we can interview for it. And so that's something that if you're interested, you want to look and go that direction. Uh, this shows how you can stay in touch with us. Uh, we're on... Twitter and LinkedIn and, and everywhere that you can think of. And this is a good way. A lot of people, and, and I explain it to people at the career fairs, with this number, if you just text that number, uh, if you text blue team to that number, then any, any job we post in this area pings your phone. So you know when a new job has posted. And they don't send a bunch of spam. You don't get two texts a day of anything. If there's not a job posted, which would be rare because we have about 30 locations in Utah. And so if there was not a job posted, you would, uh, you'd probably get two emails a month, or I mean two texts a month from it, just saying something that's going on in the area. And so with that, I am getting very close to wrapping up. Uh, I'm thinking there's some other things that you were hoping to learn or wanting to talk about real-world applications. I've been working with a lot of companies here in this market. I've been in this market for the whole time I've been with Fastenal. And so I've worked with most of the, most of the companies here in the area. And before I came here, and I was driving like a madman because I thought I was going to be late, I had a meeting at the new data center being built out in Eagle Mountain, if any of you are familiar with that. A uh, huge thing down there. And so I had just finished a meeting there to, to come here and talk to all of you. So what are some questions you, you might have about either uh, companies or sales or getting jobs, what, cust what employers are looking for? What are some questions you might have? 
Oh, come on. <laughs> yes. So you said you've been with MassMail 27 years. Yep. So it's becoming less common for employees to stay with one company long term. So can you tell us why you stayed with the same company and what you'd recommend um, as far as moving companies quickly or is it better to give a job more time to kind of feel things out? What, it's just a little bit different trend than what's happening now. Sure, that, I think that's a great question. Uh, a lot of it stems from uh, when I started with the company because when I started, I mean, when I got done with school, I was 27 years old. I still didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I was like, what, what am I going to do? You know, I, I had worked construction for seven or eight years. I'd worked in the oil field for a year. I rode racehorses for about three years. Many pounds ago, we don't need to point that out. But I, I had done a lot of different things and still had no idea what I wanted to do. And, and then I got an opportunity to come to Fastenal. And it's through, it was through my best friend growing up worked for the company. And he called me. And he said, you have a, you want a job? And I said, no thanks, I've got one, things are going great. And he said, okay, and we talked for a while. About two weeks later, he called me again. And he said, hey, I made the big pitch for you. If you'll come to work for us, here's what they have you doing. You know, I was born and raised in Montana, so he said, you'll come to work, and, and I was back there at the time, and he said, you'll come to work down in Salt Lake and train, and when we open a store in Montana, which we didn't have at the time, or a lot of the states out west, uh, he said, you can go up there and manage it. And I thought, well, that sounds cool. So I put my dresser in the trunk of my car and bungee strapped it down and I had moved. And so I was just giving it a try because I, I didn't know what else to do. And so I, I found a home here because they would let me, I think all of us want to have some influence on our jobs and the company that we're working for as an employee. And that's something that they not only let me do, they pushed me to do it. You know, they stressed it. The more decisions you can make, the, the more happy we're going to be with you. And that's, that's what we want you doing. Uh, they, they, we have an infrastructure. Here's the keys to a business. Here's the building. Here's a truck. Here's the inventory and the computer system. Now, go make decisions and make it grow. And so that's really, that's really why I'm still here. And then I've met great people, and they've taken great care of me. And so the, the I don't know. I, I just don't like the idea of having to start another job, learn all the new things, see if I get along with those people, the, the co-workers as well as the management. And so I, I do both of those things here. And so I, I stay. And the people that stay here keep growing indefinitely. You know, I was here for the whole downturn of 08 and 09. And it was just, it was brutal. It was the first time I think it was the first time in the company's history that we didn't grow in double digits. We had averaged 30% growth every year for 35, 40 years. Then we hit 08 and 09, and it was like, what in the world is, you know, we're only growing at 7 or 10, per, you know, 9 or 10%. And at corporate, you'd have thought the sky was falling. And so even at those times, we, didn't, we never had a layoff. And so I, I really like that. Because as long as I don't do anything stupid, you know, steal from us, get a DUI in a company vehicle, some of those things, and as long as I work hard, I'll have a job forever. And there aren't a lot of companies that can say that. And so because they gave me a great opportunity, because they've never had a layoff, I stay. And, and I see where we've gone. When I started with the company, there was 200 stores. We hadn't even done $100 million. It, it was you know, small. Now we've got 3,000, we're doing 5 billion. We've invested. My concern was the technological side because we're a very frugal company. I was thinking, well, this computer system we have is archaic. It barely does anything. Are they really going to invest? And sure enough, when it came time, they set aside, it was uh, 8.2 or 9.2 million dollars we'd set aside. And we were all, that was a staggering number to us at the time. And that's when we were going to go to a, from a Unix system to a Windows-based system. And it cost us like $12 million before we were done, naturally. That's, uh, that's how it all goes, it seems like. But that happened, and I knew then they were going to keep investing. And so that's, we see a lot of change in investing in technology and, and all of that. But that's why I'm still here. And I think we see a lot of people 
and I've got kids, and they've got three jobs a year, and uh, and they'll. Uh, we were talking about it yesterday uh, with some other people, and and I'll say, you know, are you going to work today? No. Oh, something wrong? No, I'm not going to go back. Okay, did you tell them? No, they'll figure it out. I'm like, no, you don't do that. You don't do that to anybody. You know, that's just, uh, you don't do that. But in this, the way things are right now with the unemployment rate and the way the economy is, there's another job. You know, they, they can get seven jobs a year. They, they can get one every other month. And, and nobody's saying, hey, you've had six jobs in the last seven months. We're not going to hire you. People are doing it anyway. But nobody gets to the top that way. N nobody. I mean, that's, uh, we are a very homegrown company. Our, uh, we're on our, our third, uh, third CEO in 52 years. And he started with the company as our, uh, we hired him 27 years ago uh, as our CFO because we needed somebody that could talk to the street better than our homegrown ones could. And he's been there, uh, learned the culture, everything. And everyone before him was all grown through, through the store. The picture of the guy that was voted CEO of the year, uh, right in front of the CEO of Southwest was, was second. But he, was, he had an associate's degree. That's the other, uh, people will say, well, do you require a bachelor's? We don't. I won't say that we never will, but when, when, you're, when one of your CEOs that got you from this level to this level didn't have a bachelor's degree and made the kind of decisions he could make, pretty tough to require it. And so it's kind of a, a thing they do. So, yeah, we're looking for good people, and we want people to stay, and that's how they grow. We promote from within, and if... I think the good companies do that. The good companies try to grow most of their people. And it's pretty tough to hire somebody from outside the company to come be your boss if you've been there for five or ten years. I mean, it's hard on employee morale, if nothing else. And so we, we don't do that. So the trend, yeah, the trend has gone where uh, I can get 50 cents more an hour over there, I'm going to go there. Okay, now I'm looking for 50 cents more an hour. But if they would have invested that time and energy there, they'd have probably made another dollar an hour instead of looking for the next 50 cents. So that's, I'd say, humble opinion of, of that. Yes, go ahead. That, that, that's a tough call for me to make because I've had people leave and that would mean my management's bad. No, which is possible, but I'm not saying it's every case. I'm just saying <coughs> I think there's a ton of that yeah. because I think a lot of them are uh, under trained and they don't really know for sure. So they try to push past their lack of knowledge by not listening and by trying to bully somebody into shutting up and going back to work. And people will only put up with that for, I mean, now our workforce will put up with it for a very short time. Used to be able to do that years ago, but now people are too educated, there's too, uh, too much availability, yeah, too much structure, too much information at your finger. I mean, you've got your laptop there. You can Google 40,000 companies in, you know, 30 seconds. And so, yeah, I think that, that management, it's gotten tougher to, to manage because you have to be communicating at a very high level. You have to be more empathetic. And the companies that aren't doing that are, are losing people quickly. Yeah, you have to sit down and listen, and which is a good thing. I mean, there's so much. Uh, just me and I've got about a medium-sized district. We do about $2 million a month, just, just my uh, business units do. And I've got 50 people or so, 55 people at any given time. All of them are probably smarter than I am. All I've got on them is 26 years. I mean, I've been here 26 years longer. But if you can get all of that information, and if they've got a problem, it's probably valid. We should listen. And so, yeah, somebody's leaving half the time. The, the people that I interview, I'll, I'll go down their resume and ask them, why did you leave this company? Why did you leave this company? Okay, why did you leave this one? Because when they left this one and went to this one, they must have thought this was a great thing. But then they've got another one after it. So how did that happen? And I always hear at least one of them, yeah, I couldn't get along with, with my supervisor. 
Good question. What else? Any real world applications, experiences, question. terrible I things? You're a manager and obviously you've been around for a while. So we've seen qualities that really good, high performing employees have. So what are some of those qualities that you've seen that make a successful employee? Oh, there's, there's thousands of them. I, I boil it down. For me now, I, I've been at the, the beginning stage of it, the middle stage of it, and now where I think it's now it's become way more simplified for me. It's, it's boiled down to the one thing that you can control 100% in every situation, and that's your attitude. It's the people with a good attitude, and people will ask that question during an interview at the, at the end of it. Okay, what are you looking for in an employee? I'm looking for somebody who has a great attitude that will work hard. If you can do those two things, I can teach you everything else. We can teach you how to run a business. We can teach you how to make good business decisions. I can't teach you how to have a great attitude. You're going to have to do that all on your own. The work ethic, we can kind of teach that. We're hoping that was done at home or, or school before they got to us. You know, that's, the, that's what we're hoping because it's tough to teach somebody how to work if, if they don't know how. But the, those are the main two things. Then I will look at somebody and go, would I work with this person? You know, would I buy something from this person? You know, trust them enough, believe in them enough, like them enough? You know, the, there's, I'm full of all these old, old sayings that came from wherever. I probably made half of them up. But uh, I'll say, people, you know, all things being equal, equal, people buy from people they like. All things not being equal, people are probably still going to buy from people they like. And so there, there's a lot to just and I see a problem with that, but there, there's a lot to just human interaction and being conversational. And we're, we're getting away from that a lot. Uh, I, I see it with, with a grandson who is on his iPad most of the time. He's like, to me, he's genius level. He can do things on the iPad when he was three that I can't do still. But it also, he's not playing as much and in interacting. When I was a kid, we were out playing. When you had a disagreement, you might roll around in the gravel about it, and then when you got done, you had to dust yourself off and get along again tomorrow, or you didn't have anybody to play with. Well, business is the same. All business is the same. You've got to get along with your customers, your coworkers, everybody, and, and we're losing that a little bit. So I really like the, the interaction in an employee, a great attitude, somebody that's outgoing, and somebody that'll work hard, and I can teach everything else. I, I squandered, I think, a lot of my opportunities because uh, I was busy playing when I was going to school, too. Uh, and, and I don't think a person should be 27 and wondering what they still want to do when they grow up. Uh, if I'd have started with this company when I was 21, I, where might I have been? So I, my advice is you've got so many things now at your fingertips that my generation didn't have or nobody had years ago, I would use the time that you're here at the school and use the time that you've got to learn everything you can. Find out what you really like because you're going to be really good at it. And you have no idea what that is until you stumble across it. So when somebody says, hey, do you want to do this or do you want to look at that? Oh, no, I don't know anything about it. You didn't know anything about anything just a few years ago. So learn about it. Find out about it. Use your time to invest it in learning everything you can and finding out everything you can. That's my recommendation. Do your research. As I mentioned, look at companies and what is available and just learn as much as you can and utilize all of the, all of the stuff that's at your fingertips, at the schools, in the classrooms, all of the things they offer. I'm walking down the hall and there's a sign there that says, come join DECA. You know, there are all kinds of clubs, whether it's the culinary school to the business school to everything in between. There are clubs that will help you, and they're basically free. You know, for the amount of money you have to invest for, the return is, is 10 times well worth it. 
So join some of those clubs. It doesn't matter if you can do it or not. Once again, don't be ashamed of anything. If you give it 100%, who cares if you flop? You learn from it anyway, and you might be the best there is at it. You don't know until you try it. And so I would join clubs. I would do some things that you, you may not have done before and get out of your comfort zone. We all grow up and go do things, and we get to a certain stage, whether that's when we're 13 or 30, we have these things that we're comfortable with, and that's what we stay with. Get away from that. Get out of your comfort zone. Do some things you would have never done. Walk up and talk to a group of people. Ooh, I, I could never do that. Why? You've lost absolutely nothing. Go do it. Try this. You know, I've never, I wouldn't go skydiving. I don't want anybody jumping out of a plane, their parachute not opening or anything. But get out of your comfort zone and go do things. That's, you know, just experiment, find things. Use all of the resources at your fingertips. That's if I did it all over, I would do that. And I did a lot of different things. I would do a lot more of them and learn about more things. What else? Are we, are we doing? Oh, I'm about to burn through it. Okay, there's got to be some other questions. No other questions? About sales, about working with businesses, about pricing structures, about HR, about anything? Take the gloves off. Any questions, fine. Um, you just mentioned that um, Festival has a big trading center in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain? There are a lot of different positions there. Uh, I come from the sales side more than the operations side. I, I know it fairly well. Most of the positions there, they've got uh, help desk positions that are doing a lot of uh, talking to stores about their products and what they need and when they need it, things like that. We don't have an actual buyer, per se, cutting POs at this location. That all had, we did for a long time, and then that's all kind of been pulled back to a corporate structure, but we do have, there are probably 200, 250, maybe 300 people there now, and uh, we, we've got our distribution center, we've got a build center that's building all of the vending machines, and we have a high-speed packaging facility, and so there are different positions at all three of those. Uh, those in the next five years are getting pulled under one big roof, but you would have to, those would be offered online also, and so you could jump on and, and see those. Hopefully that kind of answered your question. What else? Nothing else. Okay, I'm off the hook.